Hello and Namaste. Welcome back uh, to the last module of uh, Geographic Information System. Uh, this module is basically uh, ba basically done in keeping in mind two things. One is to make the users or the people like you to understand how well uh, open source software is designed and how it actually compares with an uh, proprietary software and then to un give you an uh, kind of uh, idea that how an open source standard is already being built and how India is actually uh, becoming a greater game plan, I mean it is having a, a greater strength in terms of developing an open source standard by itself so that we can even share data among us and also uh, keep the data in an open platform. So this module is uh, maybe also encapturing some of the aspects that we have already thought for example the softwares but I would deal with it in a very uh, simpler and non-detailed manner but I uh, but this is to just give you an entire view of what is open source software and how it can be used by you. So every researcher who is actually understanding this course can use this open source software for whatever research he, is, he or she is doing. So they did not use any proprietary software, uh, look at uh, aspects that is really proprietary, sit be uh, behind only one specific uh, tool, so they can develop their own science. That's what is the basic, uh, me, uh, I mean, uh, background of open source. So that that is what I'm trying to give you in this uh, particular set of slides. This has nothing to do with GIS software, GIS as a software, but it is an overall thing for which includes GIS. Okay, so that's what uh, it means. So, so let us in the first lecture let us learn about what do you actually mean about open source software. So, in this slide, uh, in this particular uh, lecture, I would cover what do you mean by open source? What are different domains? For example, Open Geo Special Consortium is there. Then, what are the standards in an open source? Uh, if you look at, then what are the organization structure? then membership and collaboration. So these are some of the things that we would uh, look into. So when I say open source, so whenever uh, 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 people speak that open source, what is source? Source is where you have built the science, the, tool, the science behind a tool, right? So now if you say open source, which means the science that is in the form of a programming uh, language that has been written as a coded language is now open for anyone to modify and use by their own uh, uh, for their own applications that is called an open source. So literally when I say open source, open source is an iterative development model promotes free redistribution. Please be careful here when, when I am uh, when I am saying it promotes free distribution. Okay. Right, and access to end products design and implementation details. So now, when I say free distribution, free distribution is the code that would have been written by a developer who is who uh, or uh, who he or she wants to share their code, their output towards for a goodwill of the society. Then, it is also to access the end product design. For example. Uh, there are many researchers who will be looking at the end product design. So they, they may not need the entire uh, flow of the code, but the end product design is very essential. So how it is arrived at? So that is what matters and most as I said, how it is arrived at the implementation details. All these three forms if you can get it at no cost, then it is called an open source software. A source that is open to availability to everyone to modify, redistribute and use for good academic purposes then or societal needs, then it is called an open source. So when we define open source, we define it in terms of like this, it allows a free distribution of the software without license fee from the developer. Okay? So please keep in mind. So it is, uh, someone says that it is free of cost, it is not free of cost, it is without licensing fee. Whatever you uh, 
buy a software whenever you buy a software you are actually buying a licensing fee but not you are not buying you are not paying for that software the science behind the software is same as that of that as an open source software but you are paying for the design and the way that software has been built for you okay so whichever uh, field you take in today in today's scenario you have an open source software which is capable of handling any kind of data information whatever is necessary for a researcher and as ask uh, has every capability as that of an uh, proprietary software now when we say open source it requires that source code could be distributed as i said it can be distributed with a software or otherwise made available for no more than the cost of distribution so sometimes for example uh, there are open source software that have been developed in in the today scenario we have easy access to internet so you just download it from the internet but in the previous days when there was uh, uh, thing that the internet was uh, so not sufficiently available to everyone at every nook and corner of the country what people used to do is that they used to charge a small distribution fee very less okay for example uh, if you want a linux distribution linux uh for example you want to you want to started with a small distribution fee so that when it reaches to you it is uh, e uh, i mean it reaches to you in a more easier and a more probabilistically in a better way so in that case they used to charge what are such parcel charges that can be done it's not a development charge or the licensing fees but only the cost for it to travel from its headquarters to your home or your office so that is what can be used okay but in today scenario you have internet access at at least uh, 90% of the india's nook and corner so at this point of time everything is easily uh, downloadable from the world wide web okay so it allows anyone to modify a software so keep this in mind this is very important because for example if there is a particular open source software it is in case let's say that someone wants to build his his or own platform the way he wants or she wants to showcase her work or her research impacts so it will help them to modify the such software or to derive other software from it so that is very essential whenever you are researching the end, the people ask for you for an end product either on the ground or a product that is evolved over a period of time so open source software helps in modifying this kind of uh, information and it helps you i mean whenever you want to develop a tool if you have an open source it's actually a easy scratch you you start with something that has been built over a period of time tested by various huge number of you pool of users then you will take it forward you will test your own code you will you will test your own uh, method of analysis then put it out to the entire community where community tests it and there is a huge pool of open source community where everyone tests it and gives you uh, a meaningful uh, meaningful uh, results or maybe a critic so once you have a critic uh, you will keep on improving that's how you build an software in terms of the best uh, available softwares that's how people have been doing all these years and to redistribute the modified software under same terms the only thing is that whenever you are using an open source software and modifying its code you have to redistribute in the terms of the same terms as per the uh, uh, the author who has built this particular software you cannot use your own terms you cannot use it for your commercial gains okay it has to be only in the terms of what the uh, developer has uh, tried to do now let coming back to uh open source open source has different licensing distribution model whenever we are looking at this yeah it is actually similar to your commercial software and also different from your commercial software okay licensing the the way we look at licenses is similar to your commercial software but it is different in terms of whatever the monetary requirements are required for uh, buying a licensing software so users need to understand the restriction and obligation please keep this in mind whenever you are downloading any open source software 
प्लीज रीड द अग्रीमेंट एंड द रेस्ट्रिक्शन एंड ऑब्लिगेशन केयरफुली ओके वाई इट्स इट देर इज नथिंग अफेंसिव अफेंसिव दैट वुड हैव बीन बुट हियर बट इट टेल्स यू द टर्म्स दैट इन केस यू मॉडिफाई इट हाउ डू यू री डिस्ट्रीब्यूट और हाउ यू कैन एक्चुअली यूज द सेम थिंग फॉर योर रिसर्च सो इट इज अ गुड प्रैक्टिस दैट ऑलवेज वेन एवर यू यूज सर्टन थिंग्स इट इज गुड टू अक्नॉलेज दैट यू हैव यूज इट ओके सो सो दैट द ऑथर हु हैज एक्चुअली डेवलप्ड इट विल रियली ग्रेट द क्रेडिट ओके सो like that it uh, there are certain things that you have to look at in in the entire uh, uh what are the obligations and restrictions are there there are many kinds of open source software or uh, soft licensing models for example the very well known as the gnu general public license okay this is very well known and mostly used uh in many platforms and may across many softwares there is uh, something called as gnu lesser general public license okay there is bsd mit and apache license so apache is one of those uh, licenses which is widely being used now also then you have mozilla you have ibm apple and sun who have their own licensing models okay now let's look at some of those uh, licenses because when you are actually going through any of these softwares the first thing that you will get is what kind of licensing they are uh, their model they are actually uh, putting up to the first model that we would uh, consider today is a gen gnu general public license so when i say a gnu general public license it grants a right to copy modify and distribute copy modify and distribute so requires the source code be available to future licenses okay so for example there is someone who has built this particular software okay so he or she is sharing it over the web so you take that software you modify it but this the same license continues to be overheld and when you actually put it out to anyone the same licensing effect will come that is what is called a gnu model okay gnu uh, public license model it's a publicly available license then you it disclaims any warranties okay no warranties applicable then may uh, blow up uh, the uh, i mean whenever you are looking at uh, uh, patents so there are there are people who have uh, i mean there are ways of looking at pay, uh, patent you need uh, to have patent you don't need to have patent but when you are looking at the public good so it is uh, it's easier for a researcher to always uh, uh, try to share the uh, thing so that other researcher is benefited and maybe it reaches the society at the end so it uh, help us in the patent assertion in a, in a longer uh, 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 goal and when you look at gnu less, lesser general public license that is called lgpl it is nothing but a gpl but the rider here is it is much easier to license uh, to combine the lgpl code with the separate program and distribute it okay whereas in a gpl code the the same licensing effect has to be taken but here you can the uh, i mean club two la uh, two softwares or the cl club the software that you have developed with the another open source software and redistribute okay that that is very important here and redistribute the combination under the separate licenses so when i look at lgpl you can have your own license but only thing is that it cannot be again Uh, for commercial users, it has to be for uh, uh, the use by any other uh, uh, public for good. And you have open uh, this this uh, particular licenses, especially the LGPU. These often be used with the so open source uh, libraries. Nowadays, people have uh, developed a huge number of libraries. Whenever you are using either Python, whenever you are using R, whenever you are using any other software, huge number of libraries have been developed. So most of these libraries are under LGPU, LGPL. So when I say LGPL, so you have a right to combine, modify, whatever. But the finally, it has to uh, reach the next person who may be benefited by this. So and it is compiled into an application and can be compliant uh, compiled to an application program that's very important in terms of uh, using a software 
only thing is that you cannot do it with a commercial purpose and the third one is you have a bst mit apache uh, a style license so this style license is a, a bit complicated than uh, both of the previous ones so these are more pervasive license it needs uh, more i mean uh, ways of looking at that particular licensing needs uh, for example the how the licensing is done what kind of licensing has to be there how the code has been uh, coming into the software so how the interactions happen so all these needs different types of licensing generally these allow free distributions modifying and license changes much like the public domain software okay but when you are looking at this it may it may even stop a future open source requirement at a particular point of time the uh, uh, source can be closed so that um, it may not be modified so there is no requirement of uh, taking it forward unlike the lgpl okay there you have to take it forward whereas here it may not be going forward in terms of redistribution then it requires it may require an attribution various uh, variants may include non standard restrictions also so it is up to the user to have what kind of restrictions he or she wants to put into that particular software a user or any kind any kind of uh, restrictions that he or she wants to get in so that that is where these licenses are a bit permissive and more complex and yeah it, it disclaims warranty as such and subject to third party patent claims so you can have patent claims but uh, even by third party and when you look at uh, open source softwares uh, licensing needs most of the open source softwares are licensed under the gpl based license so when you look at uh, bsd and mitx they have uh, less than 10% of the total contribution worldwide whereas uh, gpl contributes to almost close to 65 to 70% of the licenses that are uh, built today okay whereas when you uh, look at uh, the source codes or the libraries that have been built uh, for various uh, analysis that has been uh, built with terms of lgpls okay whereas uh, the softwares are built in the terms of gpl licenses okay now when now how did this open source uh, so now you you understood why the licensing is important what do you mean by open source but why did we start an open source so open source is basically to give a user a powerful uh, thing with without any cost okay the cost of any uh, gis proprietary software is too high when you have to handle it so to give the same feel and same uh, uh, professionality in terms of a uh, uh, normal user an academic user or any uh, user who may not be able to afford an uh, proprietary software and most importantly a user who can low uh, academically or who can research on various needs of the society by using the o code that has been already developed and did not put another uh, uh, effort in developing the code so similarly the first thing that evolved was in 1970 where the unix operating system most of you would not have seen it but if you have used it was a wonderful operating system in terms of the way it used to handle data so unix operating system was developed at bell labs later it uh, so atnt enforces the intellectual property rights and closes the code so that was the first thing but unfortunately the code was closed uh, by atnt now in 1983 richard stallman founds the uh, free software foundation this is considered to be the first and the foremost turning point where the open source software revolution started okay then we had linux towards this is the first version of the linux and today if you see at least most of the servers 99% of the servers in the world are uh, with the linux operating system okay and most of them do not use a windows software okay windows or any other kind of software it is mostly linux okay so and that's how it started evolving it was the first linux it was developed it was completely in terms uh, uh, of no gui but today if you look at it as extremely user friendly and uh, can boot in 
I can do any kind of uh, work that any of the other operating system can do whether it is Mac whether it is Windows or any other operating system that you name so. Then uh, in 1970, 1997 Debian free software guidelines was released this was the first in terms of guidelines where how the software can be developed what kind of la licenses can be used by those software and most importantly the Debian Debian source as extension how it can be used in order to redistribute such software was first put forward it was and if you belong to 1980s 1990s where you were born you would have surely heard about the Net Netscape navigator excellent browser that uh, was first introduced which was hugely used by everyone whether it is windows linux or unix operating system so that was started in 1998 so that source was also released uh, by, uh, to the user community so a lot of uh, evolved I mean it evolved to a very very large extent uh, until you had a lot of other open source software uh, which was more competent released uh, somewhere in 2006 to have and so on until then it was Netscape Navigator which actually had a, a real flavor of uh, the first form of uh, usage in terms of uh, software or an browser. So, when we look at the entire open source development the first thing starts with the documentation. So, when you have ok rather than documentation let us say a core developers first the core development happens ok then you have uh, people who will document it and people who will actually patch it ok there are certain documentations that has to be done when the core development happens so that will be done by other set of people so then they will have patchers who actually look at uh, what may be the issues in your software like for example there are bug reporters who report the bug they will test the first the beta version is released it is tested so that will be reported if there are certain bugs when the when users use it and that is reported to the uh, uh, the uh, I mean the core developers where are the patchers who actually release patches so that this bugs are addressed or if there are issues that are addressed then once it is addressed you have a also a stable releases which means to say that's the newer version if you have used Firefox Chrome etc maybe every 15 days or 30 days you get a new version of the Chrome it means to say that there are bug reporters who are reporting the bugs in that particular version then there are patches who are actually patching it so once the patching is either the patches are released directly or it is evolved into a newer version where the maintenance happens so you will have the newer version of the your uh, browser installed in maybe in 30 days or 15 days so that's uh, where the entire maintenance of an open source software uh, development happens then finally at the end is the user okay outside this particular uh, uh, development circle is the user where the user uses it uh, he or she may also have a critic about it or uh, give, may give bug, bug reporting so it may be user who nor also normally reports a bug also uh, uh, there are users who just use it for their own good and there are users who are uh, basically looking at the software as an source ok so this is how normally an open source development happens now when we look at the entire model ok this this was uh, from the wiki that I I, uh, I could uh, get this model it's uh, it, it strike me it is quite interesting in terms of the development model uh, so when we look at it the first thing or the first uh, thing is the coded the particular software is coded properly this software will have new feature funders what are the different new features that this software has already with the existing software then once that is done there is a documentation of this particular software what are the different ways this software works what are the extension it can carry what are the different uh, I mean uh, uh, the support that it has all of these ok can come in in terms of that then you have a community funded developers for example there are a community of people who actually develop a particular software and that will be used then you have a consumer of this uh, uh, contributor ok then you may have a consultant or a contributor some many a times it is consultant 
but many a times it is contributor who is actually developing the software. Then you have ideas and money in the code out in case you are looking at that part. Then there is a code and the money in which means to say that the better the code you have a better the money in. So this is the entire development model that was proposed that is actually running. So I tried I have put this in terms for you to understand that it is not just you are developing the code it has also becomes your own idea maybe it, uh, on a longer run once it has developed completely revolutionized in terms of new software so it may also give you some aspect in terms of uh, the profitability okay the model that you adopt will have its own ways of looking at it so the, that's why i have used this particular slide and then you have uh, when you look at the recent advances very recently if we take last uh, one decade there has been a huge 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 uh, growth in terms of open source software users but uh, if you want to point out a very few things the first thing was indian government that is the skidac ncst uh, released linux in almost 12 languages now it is 28 languages so it has increased uh, now most of the indian languages are being translated and linux is uh, almost available in most of the languages and Red Hat and Fedora have been extremely profitable in last couple of years, which means to say that there has been an interest towards uh, developing the open source software. Red Hat and Fedora are two Linux distributions, two types of Linux distributions, and uh, both of these uh, companies have been extremely profitable. Then you have uh, Sun, which is uh, which released the Java desktop system. Okay, so that was a kind of revolution but later it uh, really died down and most important thing is that the virus whenever you, whenever you are a window user the first thing people ask is how many virus is affected to your window if you don't have a proper uh, software which checks this uh, virus and keeps it out virus or a trojan or any of those uh, kind of things that actually affect your uh, maybe any anything that you store in your system so uh, this also has uh, certain effects so that was removed by an open source software because this is not for profit so normally an open source software when it is distributed it is considered to be an virus free it's normally virus free then china korea japan are working on an open source asian os in the previous year you could have seen the first version of it but yet uh, the full blown version has to be released then brazil and many governments across the world recommends linux in the government including india so now in uh, uh, india is closely looking at shifting uh, its environment into linux environment so that it's much easier for uh, uh, so that the, it maintains the security standards across its government offices then you had uh, in uh, probably in uh, uh, 2016 or 17 Munich uh, shifts about 14,000 desktops to its Linux so it shifted completely towards Linux then you had Nutch an open source search engine now you have a lot of open source search engine which is uh, which is parallel to even Google so you can have open uh, you have uh, have parallels with Google which is uh, just giving you an open source search and you have Lindos PCs for almost closer to USD 169 dollars okay so the Lindos was an alternative to Windows but had an had an open source and uh, combined the effectivity of the Linux okay so that was released for about 169 dollars and various flavor came up to a 199 dollars or maybe 200 dollars uh, when compared to other operating system the entire PC was uh, costing much uh, lesser than uh, what other operating system were then when you look at top developers so first we have a community of users which may which is actually smaller for any uh, software open source software but there are corporate developers who are also developing an open source software at, uh, for their users the uh, very uh, the top developer uh, one of the top developer is uh, sun sun by default uses linux supports some open source uh, development efforts for example for the uh, forte ide for java and the mozilla web browser is from uh, sun 
So, when you are looking at such things, you can say that there are corporate developers who are actually developing it for their own good, for their own good and the community good. And the similar if it is uh, taken to the user, if the interest is shown, so it can be much uh, useful for any development of the society. And you have Apple, it released its core layers for of Mac OS server as an open source BSD operating system called Darwin. Okay? open sourcing the QuickTime streaming service. So, now the QuickTime streaming service is open source service and the open play network gaming toolkit also is available with the Mac OS X. So, with this Apple has started with uh, uh, providing an open source normally Apple is considered to be very very uh, uh, proprietary in terms of whatever uh, software whatever software terms it develops or the hardware it develops. But it has come out with after Mac OS X it is trying to open it up so that uh, the open source uh, is available to the user and maybe it can be developed in a much uh, better way. Then you have IBM uh, which uses and develops uh, Apache very well known uh, server and uh, Linux also in uh, that is called as uh, and created the secure mailer. So, if you have used uh, secure mailer it is uh, quite uh, very good and created the software on Alphaworks. Okay. So, these are some of those open source uh, things that you can come across in your if you are uh, looking at various sources. Then you have Red Hat software, Fedora, Ubuntu, SUSE, Mint, Debian, CentOS. So, all of these are Linux vendors, okay, Linux operating system vendors. Then you have Active State which develops and sells professional tools for Perl, Python and uh, TCLTK developers. So, all of these uh, uh, are uh, actually uh, uh, in the open source uh, domain. So, these are the commercial players who big commercial players in fact who are looking at the open source domain. And we will look at open source software systems basically operating systems. So, the best thing that you can come to your mind always and if you have used if you have started using open source uh, operating system somewhere in uh, 2000, uh, 2008, 2009 it was Red Hat. So, everyone started with Red Hat and Fedora. Fedora was one uh, extremely uh, uh, open uh, I mean a good operating system in terms of whatever the academic uh, needs are there it is easier uh, as an environment. Whereas, Red Hat had a flexibility to work with various tools and uh, uh, maybe developing also as a developing tool. And you had later it was with the advent of Ubuntu, Linux saw a growth, huge growth in terms of people using an open source software. Then Linux meant and now it is CentOS which is actually powering a lot of systems. So, uh, both uh, Ubuntu and CentOS have been very capable into uh, getting into deeper markets in terms of how open source sof uh, softwares are used. When you look at other things it is free BSD, open BSD, net BSD. So, these are the BSDs that are all based on Berkeley system distribution of Unix developed at the University of California Berkeley. So, this, uh, this uh, has usage, but it is quite not as far with the Linux usages that are already there. So, another BST based open source project is Darwin which I have already spoke and it is uh, the base of Apple Mac OS X. So, Mac OS X uses it. So, uh, as I said after Mac OS X it is ba uh, this BST li uh, B under this BST license they have been uh, putting forward some of their own softwares for the public good. And uh, to give you just an uh, feel of what are the different uh, Linux that is available today. Uh, you, you can see that you have an Ubuntu, you have Fedora, you have Red Hat, you have CentOS, you have NetBSD. So, if in case you guys are really interested, it is very easy to even install it. Probably if you just browse in some of your YouTube videos, you will be able to see all the all of these software. So, and uh, you can download it and install it wherever you need and probably this is the best thing that you can do with your uh, uh, maybe uh, if you are an uh, academician or an uh, st uh, student, doctoral student or a master student, it is easier for you to look at the code, develop the code and also use as an operating system, much easier, much lightweight and more professional. And when you look at uh, programming tools, 
you have PHP, PHP is a very popular uh, engine behind the live content on the world wide web. So, this is normally uh, I mean very widely used in terms of programming tool. Then you have programming languages Python, Perl, TCL, TK, TCL, TK powers the best uh, GS softwares uh, in terms of raster operations. Whereas, uh, when you are uh, looking at Python, Python today it has an extremely good programming language both for GIS for uh, even for image processing or even for any other activity that you are trying to look at. Python is, uh, uh, is capable of looking at every uh, research activity that you can uh, think of. Then you have GNU compilers and uh, tools where for example, it is GCC, make, auto config. So, all of these are different tools, the programming tools that are there out today which is open source. And uh, when we look at the softwares, open office is one of those softwares which uh, probably every one of you have to uh, uh, look at. Open office is equivalent to your Microsoft office, uh, where open office also has word, it also has excel sheets, is, it also has graphics, it also has databases uh, which you can use, it, it can do anything that a Microsoft office can do, okay, but only thing is that it is free and open source. Okay, and uh, as as we compare, it is available in all the languages that even your Microsoft uh, Office is available. Stores all your data in an international open standard format. Okay, it is an ODF format. Dot ODF. You can also save in dot doc or dot docs. So that's also there. Any extension it actually supports. Stores all uh, then reads and writes from other open office software, whether it is MS Office, Kingsoft. It can read from all of these uh, uh, extensions and also store at all of these extensions. And most importantly, it is available free of charge for any purposes. So, uh, I, I would suggest if in some case, if you guys are interested, please look at open office as one uh, software which you can look at. Other one is new office, new office is also similar to open office, but open office uh, is much uh, I would say user friendly and more stronger in terms of handling anything that is thrown at it okay so new office is another one so which can be used uh, it is sim it, it this is uh, this has an uh, application towards mac os x specs basically but uh, i would suggest an open office in terms in uh, in replacement with the new office okay so then the last one is opals where it is an open source automated library system when I say an open source operated library system, it is a comparatively developed web based open source program that is actually providing an internet access to information databases and library collections. So, I have given uh, some of the catalogs here. So, you can even look at those uh, catalogs, it is uh, quite uh, helpful if someone is trying to develop this in a bigger context. There is open biblio. This gives you an easy to use an automated library system written in basically in PHP. So, you do not need to rewrite the entire library system that is containing the OPAC, okay, uh, circulation, cataloging, and staff administration functionality. So, if in case you are using it for your office, uh, uh, you can better use an open biblio than buying a software that you will not have a control on. One Biblio library administration offers an intuitive interface with broad category tabs and sidebars. So, that you can even customize the way you need, okay. So, that is much easier and more uh, I mean friendly to you in terms of maintenance. Web browsers and email, I have spoke about Mozilla, then you have Firefox, you have Thunderbird. Thunderbird is extremely good in uh, terms of handling most of your email, uh, the communications that you can have. Then you have digital collection ma management like DSpace and Greenstone, which is also uh, widely used. Now, DSpace is one of those uh, widely used in terms of open source uh, softwares. So, many of you may like how the blocks or the content management systems. So, you have WordPress, you have Joomla, you have Flown, you have Modex, Drupal. Drupal, if you are uh, Drupal, is one of those extensively used uh, content management system. And if someone wants to uh, conduct a course, online course, then uh, people may look at a tutor. A tutor can help you develop the entire module without much uh, hassle. So that's uh, one of uh, one of the content management system that is available uh, as an open source software. 
then uh, these are these are some of those uh, uh, which are there i'll speak uh, with uh, uh, each of these for example i in my next class i will speak about os uh, sim then uh, grass then uh, geo geo server would be uh, uh, i would uh, one of my ts would speak about the geo server uh, probably give you a flavor of geo server because in today's context it uh, it forms a very important aspect of how you handle the data then you have gdal i'll speak about gdal in my next slides and qgs which we have been speaking in the last 2 3 sessions then uh, these are the, some of the example of desktop systems we you may have heard about r r is extremely good capable uh, software for statistical analytical or any kind of uh, uh, programming it's extremely good uh, you know uh, for uh, background i mean r is a good software then you have a database engine like for example mysql S sqlite then the dbf so all of these uh, are uh, quite uh, good in terms of an open source software please you can and this most importantly is available in most of the operating systems okay so whenever you have time so you can explore all of these okay so uh, coming to the uh, last part the summary so we spoke about what what do you mean by an uh, open source uh, so i'll speak about open so open space uh, uh, i mean open geospatial consortium i just said about ogc but i'll speak about more about open geo open space uh, open geospatial consortium then we looked at standards uh, the organization structures and most importantly we looked at different softwares that an open source has and uh, licenses that this particular uh, uh, software offers than it is the rest uh, uh, probably i'll uh, take it up in the next uh, class as it comes uh, so we'll meet in the next class we'll look at uh, ogc etc in a much better way and also some of those softwares which i have not touched here i'll give you an introduction to that also some of the uh, softwares which are used as an urban urban analytical tools i'll give an example of all of these thank you very much